Hey guys, my name is Madison Malik and I decided to do my poster presentation on penicillin. I used the article Penicillin's Discovery and Antibiotic Resistance Lessons for the Future by Maria Lobanoska and Julia Pilla. So what is penicillin? As you may know, penicillin is an antibiotic that is used to treat bacterial infections. It comes from a fungus named Penicillium notatum and the antibacterial molecule that is produced was named penicillin. How was penicillin discovered and by who? The discovery of penicillin started with a mistake. In 1928, Alexander Fleming noticed that one of his petri dishes containing staphylococci had been contaminated and the growth of the bacteria was affected. Penicillin was the cause of it. Originally, Fleming thought that this discovery would be useful as a local antiseptic, but he was unable to purify penicillin or characterize its activity. Fleming recorded his observations in the British Journal of Experimental Pathology in 1929. Here you could see Alexander Fleming and the contaminated petri dish. The mold is the penicillium, and this right here is the Staphylococcus bacteria. Here is the chemical formula for penicillin G. So it wasn't until 1939 when penicillin had a breakthrough. Howard Florey and Ernest Chain decided to design a method to culture the fungus to be able to produce it in sufficient amounts for further testing. They used Fleming's discovery as the basis. Norman Heatley, a young chemist in Florey's lab, played an essential role in the process of purifying penicillin. By mid-1940, there was enough penicillin available to start trials with mice. In these trials, eight mice were given streptococcus and two were given a dose of penicillin. The mice that did not receive penicillin all died and those that did survived. Now that there was some success in the mice trials, chemists started to move on into human trials. So the first human trials of penicillin were not very successful because there is just not enough penicillin readily available. There were still impurities in the penicillin mix and a biochemist in Flory's lab, Edward Abraham, suggested that penicillin can be purified even more. Between 1941 and 1942, Flory, Heatley, and Chain conducted series of further clinical trials that involved 170 people. The results were remarkable. Penicillin was able to combat bacterial infections without any toxic side effects. So how does penicillin work? The protective layer of a cell wall, known as the peptoglycan, PGN, has a characteristic strength of a neck-like conformation that is mainly derived from the peptide cross linkages. These linkages are formed by the activity of special enzymes called penicillin binding proteins, or PBPs. Penicillin is a beta-lactam antibiotic it is able to mimic a part of a peptide in bacteria and bind to PBBs to stop new PGN from forming, causing the cell to burst or lice. There are different classes of penicillin, all shown here, and they're able to cure different types of bacteria such as strep throat, bronchitis, pneumonia, and more. So here is the first generation of penicillin, penicillin G. Here is the second generation of penicillin, called methicillin. Here is ampicillin, third generation, and these two are both fourth generations, carbonicillin and azlocicillin. And um, penicillin is a beta-lactase or beta-lactam antibiotic, and you can see all of the, these are the lactam, beta-lactam structures. Penicillin resistance. It was not long after the discovery of penicillin that bacteria started to become resistant towards it. In 1940, Abraham and Chain reported that an E. coli strain was able to inactivate penicillin by pr producing penicillinase. A second generation of penicillin, methicillin, was discovered and it was penicillinase resistant. Soon, methicillin resistant strains emerged, altering PBP. After that, many different strains of bacteria were becoming resistant towards penicillin, despite the new generations of penicillin available. 
Since the discovery of penicillin, there have been more than 150 antibiotics that have been found, and along with that, antibacterial resistant bacteria due to the overuse of antibiotics. Here is a timeline of antibiotic introduction and antibiotic resistance. For every antibiotic that was introduced, an antibiotic resistant strain of bacteria was found also. I know it's a little hard to see, but if you open up the um, journal that I used as a reference, you'd be able to see it a little bit more. Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you learned something about penicillin, and if you'd like to learn more, please read the article. It was quite interesting. Thank you.